so basically, so, so the problem that kind of exists in this conventional Bayesian way of thinking about it is like, what exactly is meant by the rest of the theory relative to a particular piece of evidence? Um, and their argument was as follows. Well, if, if I have a particular general theory H and a piece of evidence C, um, we will basically say that, that the proposition H or E is deemed to be kind of the, the deductive content that, that um, H and E share. Um, and the proposition, if E, then H, um, is deemed to be kind of the inductive content um, um, that of, of sort of H relative to E. And then there's a sort of startling claim at the end of that, of the end of that article was basically that, that evidence always counter supports that proposition. So really, no matter what H and E are, um, you know, you know a, E always undermines anything that kind of goes beyond it um, in this sort of probabilistic context. Now, what could sort of possibly justify these two particular sort of identifications? Um, well, um, it's a, uh, and this was kind of the subject of, of a lot of kind of the subsequent commentary um, that one can sort of read. Like this was sort of very, very contentious because if one looks at H or E, um, that is a very natural kind of meaning for a kind of a shared deductive content of H and E. Because if, for example, you have an implication um, of E that is also an implication of H, it will also be an implication of H or E. Uh, and in fact, there will be sort of a, there will be kind of a one-to-one -one correspondence. Like all of the implications of H uh, or E are exactly the implications that both H and E share. Um, but that is definitely not true of uh, if E then H, uh, which by the way, just, <laughs> you know, is, is really equivalent to just, uh, you know, H or not E. Um, but, um, you know, you can, you can kind of very, very easily see that there really is no proposition that would sort of capture all the implications of H that are not entailed by E because, uh, well, you know, one of such implications is just H and, you know, since H kind of implies, um, you know, some of, you know, you, you know, H implies, you know, H or E, you know, it's it sort of, it sort of cannot be, cannot be really, um, made like that. So, so then, um, and so one of the things that I think we did is that I think we sort of came up with a sort of story that I think makes sense of this particular argument that they made um, and um, sort of, um, um, and I think sort of has some interesting implications. So what is it that, that we sort of think that Popper and Miller should have said? Well, so why is it invalid to induce H on the basis of E? The reason is, is because there are possible worlds um, in which H isn't true that have not really been sort of refuted by E, right? They're, they're, this is kind of the basic reason why, why um, like the reason for, the, for people, for why people think deductive inferences are valid is because, you know, they are thought of as being these kind of necessary truths. Like the idea is that when you have a deductively valid argument, um, the conclusion in some sense is valid in, in, in exactly the same worlds that the premises are valid in, plus perhaps, uh, you know, a couple of additional worlds. And in, you know, in these sort of inductive arguments are not valid because this is sort of reversed. The, 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 the conclusions in some sense forbid more than the premises. Now, there is sort of, um, uh, now once one kind of adopts this perspective, it is, then, um, it is then kind of, one can then sort of think about what an inductive argument needs to do um, in a different way. Because if one has relative to some background knowledge, uh, if one looks at a theory H, um, this theory H will be true in some possible worlds and it will be false in others. And in order to convince ourselves that H is true, we basically need to um, look at, uh, um, we, we need to basically somehow convince ourselves that all of the worlds forbidden by it um, are not, um, you know, are, are not the worlds we live in. Now, for some subset of those worlds, it will just be deductively valid to conclude on the basis of E that we don't live in them. So presumably, um, if, you know, what induction needs to do is induction needs to explain why on the basis of E, it is valid to conclude we do not live in any of the worlds for which it is not deductively valid to conclude, right? So, so it seems like relative to E, you know, if we were to induce H on the basis of E, one could kind of divide the possible worlds that, e for, that H forbids into two parts. Those for which it is deductively valid to conclude that, you know, we don't live in on the basis of E and for, and those where it would presumably have to be inductively valid to conclude we don't live in them or that we probably don't live in them. Now, the kind of the, the, the interesting realization is just that if you look at um, what the effect of us observing E is on this, this latter part, on these sort of inductively 
uh, on this inductive world relative to E is that um, once we observe E, their probability actually goes up. That is just how Bayesian sort of updating works. What happens is, is that once you observe a, a proposition, um, you know, all the worlds that it refutes kind of go to zero, and the remaining worlds, their probability just kind of goes, goes up in a completely symmetrical way, sort of pro rata um, relative to, um, you know, relative, by the factor of kind of the, the worlds that were just refuted. So E kind of has the effect that it, it increases the probability of any um, of, of kind of any world uh, that is not refuted by it. Um, now, um, well, now, wh wh why does that matter? Well, how does that relate with, with, with the original argument by Popper and Miller? Well, if one thinks about which proposition in effect makes the claim that we do not live in any of the worlds for which it is, the, you know, that are forbidden by both H and by E, well, that is just the proposition, you know, H or E. And this this other group of worlds for which you know it's not which for which we would need some form of inductive reasoning to conclude we don't live in, those are exactly the worlds sort of forbidden by, um, you know, if E then H, um, and um, that, that that is kind of really sort of sort of their argument, um, and uh, this argument kind of has sort of two further sort of startling consequences that I think are sort of worth taking a look at. And the first is just the meaning of changes in probability. So to go back to the transitivity of confirmation paradox, uh, next slide. Um, and basically what, what they show, and this appears in, in sort of one of their articles, is that if you have a certain proposition, the way it changes um, relative to, to, to you know, observing the sort of evidence scheme is that kind of this difference is made up of um, kind of uh, the, sort of the, the change in, 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 in one of these sort of propositions like sort of X or E and the change in the value of the proposition of um, sort of, you know, if, if E then X. Um, and, and one kind of very, very interesting sort of consequences of that is that if you look at, at a certain general theory that is supported by the evidence and you look at some of its particular implications, um, if the more that implication in some sense just restates E, the more it is supported by it. And the more it kind of just, re uh, the more it kind of goes beyond E, the more it sort of, you know, affirms this inductive content of H relative to E, the more it is sort of counter supported by it. So, so this kind of, I think, puts, um, puts kind of a rather stark perspective on the changes in the probabilities of all the implications of general theories, because it sort of shows that 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 kind of the way that their probability changes depends only on you know the extent to which they affirm um, um, you know the, the the way the extent the, the extent to which they affirm E and the the extent to which they sort of fail to kind of affirm the rest of H. Um, so that's sort of one interesting way of looking at this 